and I got to the, uh, the bit where they check your bags after passing through immigration and stuff. And they say, um, would you like to come down the end with us, sir? <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, let's see what this is about. This doesn't sound good. G'day, I'm Kama. And I'm Blowy. It's the Kama and Blowy show. Kama and Blowy. Kama and Blowy. Walking and talking. Kama and Blowy. Kama and Blowy. Good morning, Kama. How are you this morning? Blowy. I am uh, loving this weather. Like we had a relentless sweltering summer and it was killing me. Like I was just pouring out sweat. All my sh clothes have gone moldy. <laughs> like the mold is so bad here. So it's um, cooled down. I've been sleeping with a, uh, with a blanket and it's been really nice. And today, like it's a beautiful day. It's like there's only, I can only see a few tiny clouds right in the distance on the horizon, but otherwise blue skies. Late in the days I'm walking through the rice fields. Um, they're looking golden now. You know how the rice fields look really, like a really nice green and then they go almost golden when all the greens start to appear on top? Yeah. Yeah, well, we're, we're at that stage. Um, I'm just um, going through, I just went past the local skate park at High Point. Oh yeah. And um, I just showed the, there's a sign saying that it's still closed, but I'm going through the High Point shopping center now, which is usually packed, and it's just completely empty because everything's closed still. Oh yeah. Yeah, but it means skating is good because there's less cars on the road and um, yeah, it's good. it's good for me. I saw in your vlog though, there were still kids at the skate park. I know, They'd, they don't care. Well, their parents will be paying the fine, won't they? Their parents will be paying the fine, but they won't be happy. No. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Yeah. That's um. Yeah, so I've actually been really wanting to, I've really been enjoying recording all these episodes with all the guests. Yeah. But it's just hard to line them up and I'm, I'm busy mainly at the moment being a father of a newborn. And so, uh, yeah, time-wise it's a little bit difficult. And it's always a challenge as well getting these people because they don't always have the camera. So like we had, we had Skippy the other day and getting him on board was difficult because he didn't have his own camera. So I had to reach out to another friend who very kindly lent it to him. And yeah, so we can do it, but it, there's a bit of work, leg work getting <coughs> lots of this stuff on, lined up. And lots of guests that I'd love to have on just don't have access to either the camera gear or the bandwidth. Yeah. Um, and um, it's, um, look, well, I'm sure as well the, um, the situation isn't helping, the, um, the COVID situation as well makes it a bit more tricky. Um, but yeah, I'm just, um, still skating along here um, and going past oh, look it's not very exciting what you can see now but I'm trying I'm trying to head somewhere more exciting that's my plan yeah um, yeah so and hopefully uh, I get attacked by magpie today because I've already got attacked this morning but I didn't have my camera ready so you've got to be pretty quick because this one came from the side of me and just went smack, hit me in the head. And I, and then, cause I had my camera on me and I quickly turned it on, but he, he's gone. They're pretty clever. Yep. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm about to walk past some uh, workers having a cup of tea or something. Smoko, they're on Smoko? On a Smoko break. So I may, uh, I don't think they'll in engaging conversation, but you never know. Yeah, well, it's mainly, is it mainly the, um... Which are. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go off-road here. You dropped up for a second there, Blowy. Oh, yeah, don't worry about me, camera. Yeah. I'm going, I've got a um, pretty hairy hill here, and Ew! I'm picking up some serious speed now, camera. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to do it now, but that's another thing we just forgot to do, just set our, uh, plotting our journeys. 
Oh yeah, I've um, put Strava on me today because um, I did it when I left my house just so I could see how far I skate in total. Yeah, I, I didn't really hear what you said then, but that's okay, I'll, I'll catch it in the edit. Yeah, because um, last week, Cameron, when um, I went down that big hill, I um, the, the mic, you wouldn't even know that it's um, going down a big windy hill because the, there's a thing called a dead cat, which we've got on our mics. If you can see here, it actually, it literally looks like a dead cat. That's why they call it that. But it cuts out all the, uh, the wind noise and it works really well. Yep. I've got a little dead kitten on mine as well. Oh yeah, mine's more of a dead mouse. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, today I thought I'd talk about uh, one of my uh, times I went to Tokyo searching for work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not actually sure if I've told you this story before. Um, yeah. Well, not really. You've, you've mentioned it. I'm, I'm keen to hear about it, Kama. Yeah. Okay, so first we have to go back to Vanuatu because that's kind of where it starts. And when I was living in Vanuatu, I was living in a bamboo hut, living very simply. And I was actually starting to question all my educational choices I'd made before that because I started to get really interested in uh, renewable energy. Yeah. And um, I was actually in my... I've always kept like a notebook with me and kind of carried it mostly wherever I go. I don't actually have one with me now, so that's kind of... Uh, but I've got a phone if I need to. Uh, make some notes yeah but um I uh, used to sketch all these inventions and things that I had uh, for ideas of ways to um, you know store energy on a bicycle and then have it help you propel you up a hill and everything but anyway um, so I was really interested in um, renewable energy at the time and I went back to Australia and because I'd been living in such a simple way so I was in Vanuatu as a, uh, it was called the Australian Youth Ambassador for Development. And you get a very basic living wage. And most people, it allows them to just get by. Um, you know, after rent and you pay for food and stuff over there. Because if you're living in a apartment or something there, it's not cheap. Power's not cheap. Then if you're buying food that's imported, that's not cheap either. But I lived in a bamboo hut and I um, bought my food at the markets or helped in the garden and we grabbed it and uh, we'd eat at home. And we were cooking for like a family of maybe 10 people. Yeah. And so we just make a big, a big pot and all share it. So anyway, I wasn't using so much money and I was one of the few people that actually went home uh, back to Australia. And I think I had about, it was the most I'd ever saved in my life. It was something like $5,000. And uh, I bought a laptop, a mountain bike, and a ticket, return ticket to Japan with a bit of spending money in my pocket still. And I actually went uh, to Japan for three months. And I had a plan to stay in Japan because I really wanted to be there. Uh, but I wanted to work in the renewable energy sector. So before I went to Japan, I got on the internet and I looked for all the uh, renewable energy companies I could find. And um, I printed out the addresses and I said, I'm gonna basically uh, visit all these places while I'm in Tokyo. And uh, I'll, uh, yeah, look for a job at one of these places. Hopefully one of them will have a place for me to work. And so I took a backpack and packed my suit so I could go and look kind of pretty spiffo. And uh, yeah, jumped on the plane and went to uh, Japan for three months. And um, yeah, so the, the basic idea was that I, uh, I printed up some of my CVs. And I also, I think I did a, uh, it was kind of similar to the bamboo kind of dude where I, uh, I kind of did a one page cover letter that kind of introduced myself and what I was doing. Yeah. And I, I was actually friends with Junko at the time, my wife, but we weren't, we weren't together. But I remember asking her as a friend just to check my, my Japanese and make, make sure it looked nice. And so um, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't good. So um, she fixed a lot of bits for me and um, I printed that out. And I also went to this, uh, one of those free magazines had this, uh, it was almost like made out of 
telephone book pages, like white pages, uh, sorry, yellow pages, white pages, kind of, uh, you know, that paper they print on? Yeah. That's thin and, thin and uh, not glossy at all. It's quite a, uh, it's not matte, what you call that stuff. It's low grade paper, but quite thin. And uh, one of those magazines, of free magazines or whatever, actually had um, like a map of Tokyo on it. And so I used that and I also bought a little uh, street directory. Yeah. And, and I, I basically found all these different um, addresses in Tokyo and I just plotted them on this little one page and just put little red dots on different places in Tokyo. And so that way I could kind of see which, which, uh, which offices I'd, I'd visit on a certain day. Hey, Kama. Yeah. Can I just stop you for a second? I'm just um, skating along here and um, there's Australian Defence Force. It's about six um, Australian Defence Force and six police men, women, um, skate, uh, walking along. They're checking out the um, area for um, people illegally dining and stuff like that. Diving? Dining. Oh, dining. Yeah, going to the cafe, so. Are they checking their addresses and stuff? Well, you're not allowed to eat inside, and so they're just checking that ah. people are, do are abiding by the laws. Yep. And they've just increased the fine to like $5,000. Yeah. So they take, they're pretty serious here. That's the first time I've seen the um, Defence Force walking around. Have you ever been stopped? No. No, okay. But I did just do a, um, a U-turn. Yeah. Look, I'm not doing anything wrong, but because we always get picked on, well, we did as, as um, young kids skating around, where they always used to stop us and stuff like that. So I thought, look, I'll just um, yeah. turn around. Like, I'm not doing anything wrong, but you know, they'll- That's never stopped them before. Exactly. Yeah. But I'll let you continue, camera. Yeah, so um, I, bought, I also bought a street directory and this is where I have to kind of pause and explain how st addre street addresses work in uh, Japan. So in Australia and I guess most of the Western world, the basic system is that um, an address, you'll first put the, the, the street number, then the street name, then the suburb, and then the city, a postcode or whatever, but in Japan it's a little bit different. So first of all it's back to front. Everything in Japan is basically listed from big to small. So even like personal names, you'll say your family name first and then your, then your, uh, your, your given name. And uh, you know it's a collectivist society. So even like uh, dates, you'll go year, month, day. And um, most stuff is kind of in that order. If you introduce yourself from a company, you'd say your company name first and then your surname. Um, but anyway, street addresses are the same. So you'll start with, uh, in this case, it was all Tokyo To, which is basically Tokyo Prefecture. It's not really a prefecture, but anyway, that's beside the point. And then you kind of go down into the, uh, into the ward. Um, and then you'll go into a smaller subsection, which is kind of like a suburb. And then, yeah, so they kind of have area names as well. So there might be, uh, uh, for example, Shinjuku would have uh, Shinjuku, all these different, they call them chomes. They'll have like, uh, I lived in Nana Chome, for example, for a little while, which is Chome number seven. Um, and after that, they number the blocks. So it's not the streets that are named, it's actually the, uh, the blocks. Yeah. So in, in a particular area, there might be say, I don't know, 20 blocks and each one of those is numbered. And then each, each address on that actual block is also numbered. So you'll often have like, you'll see like a number plus a stroke and another number and that's what it is. So anyway, so to, to find an address in Tokyo, you have to look first find out what the actual the ward is and then once you've got the ward you can find uh, the little suburb within the ward and then the, the the blocks and everything but it's quite complicated and it took me a while to figure that out and no one had actually explained it to me I just kind of figured it out on my own 
Um, but now you just throw the address straight into Google Maps and it's so easy. It will even tell you which way to go. But um, I was walking around the streets of Tokyo basically with this uh, little map book. And uh, it, it was kind of a learning experience in itself, just kind of figuring out how to get to these different places and find these addresses. Because even when you find the address, then it's sometimes like it's in a building, but it doesn't sometimes say what floor it's on. So you've got to go into the building then and find the right floor and go up there. And often there's not even a secretary or a foyer or a receptionist, sorry, at the front. So uh, it was quite complicated. And I went into all these different places and sometimes they were kind of acting curious towards me, like, oh yeah, can I help you? And I'd explain it to them, like, oh no, we're just a small company with not really a budget, so we won't have any positions. I said, oh, can I leave my CV with you just in case something happens? Oh, it won't. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. But can I just leave it anyway? Uh, sure. And I'm sure it probably went straight in the bin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in Japan, basically what people do when they're looking for a job is they, um, it's normally straight after a graduation from university, big companies have uh, recruitment kind of drives. And so everyone applies and you do a written test and everything. But even with your CV, you don't just print them off. You go to a shop and you can buy these standard CV kind of uh, forms and you handwrite that each one. So, um, I mean, that, that shows that you've got a, uh, at six. A good handle on the language and everything. What's that, Blowy? Oh, no, I just passed some um, kids and they asked me if, um, if it was a GoPro Hero 9. And I said six. <laughs> wow. I'm impressed they're, so, uh, they're on the ball, aren't they? They know about the nine. Oh, they do. Yeah. And you've got to have the newest thing these days. Otherwise, you know, the picture quality is going to be crap. <laughs> yeah. And the street cred as well it'll be good the quality will be good until a new one comes out then it's just shit quality <laughs> yeah like the quality just degre degrades instantly yeah uh, this is going to be so interesting to look back on you know in 40 years and watch this and these kids is that a gopro hero 9 <laughs> no it's a 6 uh, no longer interested that's right yeah well at this stage that i was uh, going around tokyo i was still using a, a film camera to uh I, I took a few shots and I'll post them on, on uh, Twitter or whatever, but um, I, I'd actually just scored a, uh, a camera from Junko's parents, actually. They were thanking me for letting their son come and visit me in, uh, in Vanuatu when he was 16. It was pretty impressive, actually. They, let, they didn't know me that well, but they kind of sent their 16-year-old son to the other side of the world, to Vanuatu, to stay with me for a couple of weeks. And um, he basically ended up not being able to do much because I got malaria a couple of days after he arrived and so I was bedridden <laughs> and uh, he was so nice like he was just basically caring for me and I was telling him to go out and do stuff but he just stayed by my side and like wet my for forehead with like a wet towel and everything and I was thinking there's no way I'd be that mature when I was 16 I'd uh, be uh, I'd be out of there yeah so anyway I kind of visited all these offices and the standard process was just to knock and uh, try to use my politest Japanese to just kind of describe who I was and what I wanted. Some people were actually quite hostile to me. Like that, get out, get out. Like in Japanese, they tell me to just say, get out. <laughs> um, what they call security. And some other people were just like confused because um, yeah, this is generally not done in Japan. But I thought it was worth a crack. And I was actually quite hopeful that I would I was actually quite confident that I, I, that some opportunity would present itself. But I think I wasn't in any of those offices for more than say three or four minutes. And it wasn't until the, the last one, which was in the neighboring uh, uh, prefecture of Saitama. And I explained what I was doing. And he said, oh, thank you so much for coming out here. I really appreciate that. You want to do a bit of effort. But, you know, we don't really have any jobs, but would you like a tour of our facility? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'd love that. Thank you. And he took me down to the vending machine. I remember this bit clearly. And he said, would you like a drink? And I was like, oh, wow, this is, he's giving me good service. And um, I remember he was surprised when I chose the green tea instead of, say, a Coca-Cola or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just remember that part clearly. But he showed me all around it. 
they were doing these experiments on the roof where they had these kind of cactus that were like a soft cactus, a succulent, and they were growing like a, uh, in a big bed on top of the roof to act as an insulation, insulator. And so he was saying, yeah, look, he showed me under the roof and they had all these, they had all these uh, uh, thermometers like under the, uh, the insulated part and under the regular bit. Camera. Yeah. I've just found this awesome rail. Oh yeah. So it's skating, but um, the run up's pretty chunky. You're gonna have to describe, you know, what this means. So, because I'm on my rollerblades, we like to grind on these um, rails, get our, you slide along them, um, put your, <clears throat> in between your wheels here. And um, these skates aren't actually for grinding, but you jump up on it and you slide along. And um, this one's a massive, long yellow rail. And you'd never seen it before? I'd never seen it before, no. I'm in this place, which is the old um, pipe works, where they used to make pipes. And um, it's just got like, a lot of historical buildings here. Here's like a really old um, rundown um, factory where they used to make the pipes. Um, it's looking pretty, pretty um, derelict now, but um, it's, um, it's quite, quite interesting here, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> Pipe fa factory, that sounds like it's perfect for grinding. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, that's where they make the grind poles. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I was... Um, yeah, and my last day of doing these, this job search, and this guy's probably spent an hour or so um, showing me around the facilities and sat down and kind of, just kind of encouraged me to keep trying. And uh, he said, look, I don't think there'll be any opportunities here, but thank you for trying. We're a small company. We're kind of doing more installations and stuff rather than anything I can see that you could really help us out with. And um, so I kind of accepted that this time, none of these were probably gonna come to fruition. So anyway, I headed back to uh, Brisbane and I got it. The cheapest ticket at the time was a Garuda Airlines one. It was via Bali. So I don't, that time I don't think I even left the airport. I just stayed within the uh, Dempensar airport. And um, anyway, when I arrived back in Brisbane, I didn't know it at the time, but this was just the morning, probably about, I don't know, 14, 15 hours away from the Bali bombing about to happen really yeah and i got in there and because i didn't want my my suit to get crumpled and everything i was wearing that on the plane and i also thought they probably treat you a little bit better if you're dressed nicely yeah so i wore my suit and i was grabbing i had my backpack and i got to the uh the bit where they check your bags after passing through immigration and stuff and they say um would you like to come down the end with us sir <laughs> and i'm thinking oh let's see what this is about this doesn't sound good no. <laughs> and um, so this is like, wait, it, was, it wasn't like in a special room or anything, but it was in a, um, in a section that was completely away from everybody else. Like there was no one else down there. And um, they went through all my stuff in my bags. And um, <laughs> they're pulling out stuff and asking about it. Cause I had lots of books and stuff in there. It was pretty heavy on my baggage. But then they got to my files. And at that stage, I somehow got this confidential stamp and I, I stamped it it was in red on all my contact list yeah I'd printed it out like my I'd done it in Excel oh yeah yeah, yeah. and I had like probably 10 pages and I put confidential just because I thought it looked cool it looked cool yeah, yeah but it looked so dodgy when she's looking through there and she was scanning the pages I don't know if she was looking for at that time like it was definitely a lot of suspicion to anything from the Middle East so I'm not sure if she was looking for those kind of names or what, but she was looking through them all. And uh, I would say most of those kind of, they were probably either Japan, America, Vanuatu or Australian addresses. And um, yeah, so she kind of spent a minute or two looking through that and then put it down. And then she came to the, um, the map of Tokyo that had all these red spots all over it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh no. And she goes, what's this? And I'm like, oh, this is um, a map of Tokyo that uh, I just went looking for a job uh, in the renewable energy sector. And so I just plotted out all the addresses and I showed her the other page with all the renewable energy address 
uh, companies and their addresses and stuff. I said, so I just plotted them out on a map. And she goes, okay. Yeah, oh, these, these are all the, um, the, uh, the electricity um, power plants and um, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so it didn't look good. But I think towards the end, she realized this guy's just a bit eccentric. Yeah. And uh, a bit of a DIY kind of guy. And um, so she kind of said, oh, all right then. And I said, oh, I can go. Like she didn't say you can go if I remember correctly. She was kind of just like, all right then. So I had to ask if I could go and she kept looking at me in the eyes. And I think like that technique is really interesting because you kind of start to feel guilty even though you haven't done anything. Can I go? Can you? Can you? Curiosity got the best of me. And I said, can I ask like why you singled me out? Like, uh, I'm just curious. And she goes, well, mate, look at you. You're on a flight from Bali. You're wearing a suit and you're carrying a backpack. Just doesn't, something doesn't seem right. And I said, yeah, well, the reason I got my suit on is because uh, this was, I didn't want it to get crumpled. And um, she goes, all right. And uh, like, but at that stage, she'd already decided I could go anyway, but I still wanted to know. But anyway, yeah, so I left and yeah, I didn't go back to Japan working for a re renewable energy company. That's pretty funny because you wore your suit because you thought you'd get preferable treatment from it. But in fact, you got the opposite. You got treated like a suspect. Yeah, so if I kind of wore, if I just kind of worn, uh, you know, flip flops, thongs or whatever, and some, uh, yeah, some shorts and a Hawaiian t-shirt or something, I probably would have got waved through. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, let that be a lesson to you. But then we wouldn't be having this episode now. No. Oh, that, that time I went through Bali security, they went, oh, go through, mate. And then that the episode would be over. Yeah. But afterwards, when, like the next, the next morning when I woke up and saw the news about the Bali bombing, I, always, I started to wonder, did they have some tip-off or something that something could happen and they were just on high alert? I, you know, it's, it's possible, I don't know possible isn't it i can see a magpie because i've never been searched that thoroughly before i i've generally had lots of my stuff searched and asked questions like i remember my, my first time to japan they took like lint samples from my pocket and put it like in a little sample petri disc kind of thing and i think they wrote my passport number and put it on a sticker or something testing for drugs probably yeah but i was thinking about that like what if you got this um you went to an op shop or something and got a second-hand jumper and, you know, there were traces of some drugs that someone else had had in them or something. Yeah. You know, that could be a real danger. Well, what if you um, were going to Bali and you had a boogie board bag and someone put five kilograms of marijuana in there just and you had no idea how it got there? Yeah, imagine that. Imagine that. Yeah. But anyway, that's my story. I ended up going back um, as an English teacher uh, a few months later and uh, yeah that's another story I guess. Did you go through Bali again? No, I, the next time I went through Vietnam it was a ridiculously expensive flight as well like at that stage it would have been early 2003 yeah and it was 1,000 I think it was just under 2,000 Australian dollars for a one-way ticket. 2,000? Wow. Yeah via Hanoi and I think it had like 10 a 10 hour stopover in Hanoi. Yeah, well. I didn't leave the airport because you, you couldn't get a visa on arrival and I didn't really have enough money at the time to be uh, applying for the, uh, the visa just to leave for 10 hours. Like I, I was broke that, at that stage. And uh, yeah, I, uh, in, in Japan as well, as you know, they, uh, they pay you on a monthly basis. And it's normally like a, it's, you do your month of work and then probably two or three weeks later you get your first paycheck. So I didn't get my first paycheck till about six weeks in and Tokyo is not cheap. And I had to be taking all these trains all over Tokyo. So um, yeah, that was, that was a rough, the first two or three months. That was, that was quite rough. Well, yeah, we didn't really um, 
back in those days, we didn't really plan plan very well, did we? Oh, ちょっと散歩してる。そうそうそう。失礼します。Oh yeah, just saw a friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm pushing Rudy. He was getting a bit grumbly there for a bit, but now he's uh, he's settled down a little bit. He's still loving the uh, the walks. Yeah, there was one time that he was crying, but that, I think he was really hungry. And when you're hungry, you just need to be fed. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But anyway, Blowy, we've reached that uh, 30 minute mark. The magic 30-minute mark. Um, I'll just quickly let people know that um, if you got this far, um, you might be enjoying the videos. But just to let you know, we've also got this available as a podcast on any of your favourite uh, podcast apps, so you can listen to it there um, or continue watching on YouTube. But please comment and um, rate our podcast if you um, could feel could be bothered. Doing it, but we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, all that stuff helps us just become more visible. So、um, hopefully, the right people who want to see this content can see it. And I realise it's not for everyone, but there's definitely people out here. As you said, Blowy, some people spend hours watching other people play video games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember. I remember the first time I saw that that on YouTube.、Um, I was watching.、Um, I did a search for a motorbike. Um, FMX doing a flip or something, and the the video games came up, and I'm like, what? You, what? Who wants to watch video games? But now it's a multi-billion-dollar industry. So. Oh, absolutely, yeah. What What do I know? Yeah. How are we going to finish this one, Cammer? Um, do you have a hat on? I've got a helmet on. Can you put your helmet over the camera? All right, I'm just going to check. There's no magpies about to attack me, but yep. All right. One, two,、yeah. three. G'day, I'm Kama, and I'm Blowy. It's the Kama and Blowy show. Kama and Blowy.